This is Bill Hartzer, and today on the Bill Hartzer podcast, I'm going to talk about domain name values and uh, how to kind of determine the value of a domain name. And so there are essentially a couple different uh, classes of domain names, if you will. Okay, and so yeah, there are the let's put one class say over a hundred you know, worth over a hundred thousand dollars or more and so those domains are the premium domains and not really the domains I'm going to talk about today and and, and how to price those what I'm going to talk about a little bit is um, is the concept of comparables and so one of the ways we can determine the value of, for example, of a domain name, but also the value is, is similar to the value and how we determine, uh, you know, uh, the value of real estate or a house, for example. And we look at uh, what we call comps, and we look at, you know, c comparable domains that have sold, um, or comparable houses that have sold, kind of in the same area with the same, you know, value and. Uh, or features, you know, four bedroom, three bath, three bedroom, two bath, in the same area, and and so forth. Well, we look if we go to domain names, we're looking at keywords in the domain name, okay? And so and and those that's how we determine comps. One of the let's take an example of Idaho Resorts, which is a, a domain name that I own, and I bought a while back. And if we go to a site called Name Bio, and that gives us sales data, okay, and that's been reported publicly, we put in a word, and I'm going to start with the word resort, and it's going to bring us up about, you know, a list, um, you know, the top 100, okay, domains or 100 lists of, you know, a list of 100 domains that have sold when they sold. And so forth, and 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 in where they sold. So, for example, you know what we're looking for is we're kind of looking for some domains that are that are that are similar, um, that have sold. Okay, we're looking for a list of comps, and I'm not really seeing something. You know, here's Hawaiian Resort. Well, in that case, it's not Hawaii Resort, so it's not you know a state, but it is Hawaiian. You know, and that sold for seven hundred seventy-five dollars. So we can kind of, you know, on Namejet, so we can kind of, you know, get a value a little bit there, a starting value. Then we kind of go through, and we can see some others, Atlantic Resort, um, and so forth, Florida Beach Resorts. Okay, kind of similar, but you know, it's not FloridaResorts.com. Um, you know, so we can kind of what we can do is we can get comparable domains that have sold and kind of start to get, you know, an idea of value um, by looking at that. If there is a case where the where there is a website involved, okay, if 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 the purchase of the domain name or you know it, it, there's a website involved, it it is totally. Kind of a different way of looking at it because we have a value that is created specifically with that you know with a website in mind and we think of, you know, we can think of it as an online business or a business and so then we're looking at potential revenue you know revenue from that website and domain name then we're looking at you know potentials with other value for example where you know we can look at uh you know, but the revenue, for example, if we look at the revenue, we're talking about multi, you know, probably you know one to three years, you know, times the annual revenue. Okay, um, then, but we have to look at things like if there's a website involved, we have to look at things specifically. For example, like okay, how if we wanted to start from scratch with a brand new domain name. And even if it's kind of an expired domain name, but if we wanted to start some from scratch, okay, we have costs to develop it to, to, to develop that domain. We have web development costs, okay? Is there a custom you know system or, or management system on there? Is it is you know there's a, is, a, is it a custom site? Um, web design, logo, 
um, uh, then we're talking about marketing costs, okay? How much money needs to be put in to develop that brand, okay? How much money has to be put into, um, you know, marketing, website marketing and SEO and, and those values. So how much do we have to put in when it comes to yeah, how much is going to cost to get the number of links that that website has currently? And, and uh, you know, certainly we could put a cost on, you know, buying the traffic immediately from, you know, things like Google Ad, you know, Google Ads, okay, but that has a value, in it, you know, so that has a value. So there's multiple way, you know, ways to put a value on a website to basically say, okay, well, if I wanted to buy a, or create a no a new website this is what it would cost in today's you know in today's revenue um, let's take a look at you know I've talked about comps but let's take a look at also GoDaddy's uh, GoDaddy's tool they have an appraisal tool and so they've taken the same domain they've taken this you know as idahoresource.com and um, they put a value so we also have you know Wisconsin resorts which is another state name resorts that sold for three thousand dollars and then Georgia resorts.com sold for seventy one hundred okay so we don't know when specifically we could probably come up with you know the date of when that was sold I believe those were from um, yeah sold on the GoDaddy platform but I, again it's it's um, that's you know that's the value there and we have a different you know we kind of so we're starting to get close starting to get close as far as the value goes um, and give an idea of what you know it should be priced at um, those are you know specifics you probably you know sh because these are automated appraisers we probably should go you know would probably reasonably go go higher uh, if it's some a case where basically you just want to liquidate uh, the name then that would probably take something like this price and go a little bit lower and see if we can get you know a, a current buyer um, to as far as to liquidate it we look at another another option here's another domain okay an appraiser um, epic appraise.epic.com is a good um, place to uh, and and to take a look at we have a little bit more detail luckily in this case so we have things like um, you know the domain category we have also the keywords we also have what uh, while their TLDs are taken and that's kind of important because you know, they're, the, the, com, the .com and the .net are taken, so there's a little bit more demand. If if the .com, .net, .org, .co, you know, all these other TLDs were taken, there would be more demand, and that would show some more demand, and the potential buyers, because somebody the, like the .net might want to buy the .com, and so forth. So there, um, that that's an option, um, and so there's, provide some more value what I look at also though are the demand of how many advertisers are currently bidding on that keyword okay there's some demand there um, and they're bidding on the keyword versus you know versus there's no ads for the keyword okay so that's you know that that puts some value there brings it up a little bit so then we also have the average monthly searches how many monthly searches are there you know per month for that what's the demand and not only that how much is it how much um, on the Google Ads how much are they willing to spend per click for that domain name okay and what's the competition those are those are numbers that are going to you know increase um, as we get the month as the monthly searches goes up as, the, as those values you know um, obviously if there's 5,000 searches a month and it's Fifteen dollars a click. That's going to be probably have a, a higher value for the domain than it was than it would be with uh, than it'd be lower. Um, so let's take a look also at the kind of the you know the expired domain market and kind of I want to tell you a little bit about the process. So basically, when somebody so when somebody re, you know does not renew a domain name, 
okay they end up um, getting you know that domain name there's two things that happen either the registrar themselves where the register you know like uh, like uh, network solutions uh, or, or or GoDaddy they may auction off the domain name before it actually gets to the process or to the date and time when actually it actually drops and becomes available for anybody to register that is a pre-release domain in that case um, so those pre-release domains, you know, those are still typically in Google's index, and we want to make sure that those um, those are the ones that are a little bit more desirable uh, for certain reasons. So when we come down to, you know, there's actually a list of pending delete domains. Um, if they're not auctioned off, what happens is is it just goes. It's a, essentially a holding period for 90 days, and then a one date and time. For example, this one here, zero fx.com, say at 11 a.m. Pacific, it would drop and, and, and anybody could go then and register it. Um, if we look at, for example, this particular list, um, Epic has a list that is a pending delete. And so they've taken their domains from um, their, you know, their values from their appraisal tool, and they've actually then make it available so that you can take a look at the list and you can sort basically the list by for example appraised value and you can see domains um, that are going to drop and become available for anybody to register and then you know that particular date and that they're going to um, drop there's about 485,000 domain names in the next four or five days that's going to become available so that said, um, then you know here are some values. Um, I'm not really concerned about page rank or Alexa rank or search volume. Um, the extensions, like I said, how many other you know I, you know unip.net is is uh, is uh, going to be available, but the .com and then five and four others are actually going to be are already already registered. So the more TLDs that are registered. You know the more uh, you know the the more value it can potentially have. If we're looking at also though, I like to look at the age, so we can sort by age. So I'm looking at, you know, the, um, obviously these domains with these ages, these um, there's some bad data there, but so I kind of ignore that. But if you start to look at these domain names were registered for 24 years or 23 years 22 years somebody actually you know had it and read, kept on registering or renewing it for that time amount of time and they were probably had websites on them so those would be you know potentially um, you know good targets for example booksoncd.com was probably a website where you could buy books on CD and um, audiobooks and in you know on CDs and so they might have some you know must have some value probably because of the, the technology it probably doesn't have much value anymore but that said it might have links and so forth that has value to somebody we start to look through you know then we look at domains okay that you know the SKADA um, then then we keep on going down and we can see others you know here UNIP.net um, you know Mabel.com uh, maybe somebody's name that might be uh, have some some value and so we have uh, these basically these are not necessarily names that are that are good names that might you know like for example if we you know look look at something like uh, edgelight.com that might not have value but it might have links and it might have you know it might have you know because it was a domain at some point that had a website might might have um, value value there so that's um, so that's that's the pending delete list um, and what you do want to do is want to take a look and see if that particular domain name for example is still you know is still actually in the in Google's index because most likely um, domain names that were 
not in you know that uh, that are getting to this point where they're pending delete they're typically removed from the index I took a look at one insurancequestions.com in this particular case it actually still is in Google's index so most likely it probably ha had a website and at some point and it may have even uh, may have some links pointing to it um, and so that's why it's in the index but if there's out there maybe other domains this was another one that on the list that had you know that has value um, this uh, 4SH for, worth 14,000 because it's a short name um, that has potentially some value but again because it's on the pending, the pending delete list it's not actually here in Google's index and that kind of can make you know make a difference what you would have to do is register the domain name put a website on it and and then and then you know and and after a certain period of time either requ either verify the Google search console and get the na name uh, requ you request actually that it be re-indexed or recrawled or you just put the website out there and wait until Google does this thing and recrawls it again so um, those are the the registrar pending deletes basically may have good value you know good value and might be worth it to pick up those names but again at this point you know they're probably going to be not at all in google's index so this has been uh the bill hartzer podcast for uh today and uh talking basically specifically about domain name values um we talked about uh namebio.com um, appraise.epic.com and Epic um, as Marketplace and their pending delete domains and then also the um, domain tool from uh, from GoDaddy their domain appraisal tool that can give you an you know, idea of um, the value of a domain name that's been said um, thanks for joining me today and so again this is the Bill Hartzer podcast <music>